tomorrow is a big day for the stock market. So that means a big day for us holding any type of stocks or mutual funds or ETF or any assets, paper assets in the, in the, in the market. So why tomorrow is important? Well, because it's gonna be the day or the second day for the FOMC meeting actually publishing what they're gonna decide to do for the monetary policy. Meaning, are they going to continue to increase rates at a very aggressive pace? Or are they, like pretty much many people right now in the market expect to somehow send a pulse message, you know, into especially as we get into 2023. So let's get into exactly what we can expect and how it can, you know, drive your strategy if you want to either swing trade, day trade, or continue to invest in your favorite stocks based on what's going to be decided tomorrow. So if you look at the market today, after, uh, I mean, pre-market, things were looking pretty good because the futures uh, pre-market were indicating that um, we're going to have a pretty decent green day, 200 points in plus for the Dow Jones, um, almost 1% for the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. But as soon as the market opened, you can see everything just decreased all across the globe because we did have some economic indicator and reports that came out, especially on the job market with the job openings that are still above the 10 million, you know, and it kind of cooled down or killed this, you know, green day we're supposed to have. Why? Because people are now kind of anticipating that the Federal Reserve is going to start shifting the narrative, all right? Since pretty much beginning of this year, they have been going at crushing inflation. And now they may come out and see and say, you know what, we are seeing to see some signs that what we've done did so far is kind of working a little bit. We can see signs of the effects of the impact of different increase rates that we had, all right, in the past. So I think the market is kind of anticipating that, and that's why we've seen some kind of you know, short rallies since pretty much the, the, the month of October, best month of October in history since the 70s uh, 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 in the U.S. market. But the focus will not be on what they're going to do in December and November, because I think the market is already kind of waiting and expecting 75 basis points or 0.75% in November and 0.5% or 50 basis points in December. I think the market already kind of discounted that factor that in, all right? Now people are really looking into what is going to happen next, all right? So if in 2023, they come back, I mean, they, they say for, for, for 2023, we're going to start having 25 basis points every other month or 25 basis points every quarter or just pause. If they do mention this, the, 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 the word pause or softening, phew, or, I mean, people are going to, the market is going to take off, right? So we are looking into a Fed that's going to be dovish, meaning the Fed is going to be a little bit, you know, smooth and not willing to break everything else to bring inflation down. Because whether you want, whether you want to believe it or no, the effects of what they're doing take sometimes years, like two years, a whole year to be totally implemented and working its way into the economy. So they already did that seven times, already increased interest rates seven times up to date. And this is the first time in 40 years a Euro Central Bank have done that, all right? Now, based, I mean, on the back of that, we also had a lot of voices kind of raising in the market, in the economy, you know, whether they're academics, academics, whether they are billionaires, whether they are investment companies. I mean, later today, we have Morgan Stanley, one of the biggest banks in America, and BlackRock, one of the biggest, if not the biggest investor or investment firm in America, or in the world, I should say, say that, well, they expect the Fed to start shifting. BlackRock is pretty much the bank or the company who runs the world. This is what I'm hearing on the street. So if BlackRock is already telling us or telling clients, which are the 1%, that what is what, this is what the Fed is supposed to do, then maybe pressures what was put onto the Fed in order to give this end-of-year rally. Remember, 
Next week is also election day. And prior to elections, the current administration or the administration in place always wants to make sure they can grab additional votes. And that's why since the beginning of this year, our 401k balances have been going down. We had brokerage account, you know, retirement account decimated. So if we have this sense of rally going into the end of this year, maybe, you know, it can kind of play in their favor. Not sure if they're going to work out, but that's usually what happens, all right? This is where politics kind of interferes with economy and investing world. So we want to hear for a Fed that is going to be dovish tomorrow. That's what the market is also expecting. And that's why we saw pretty much a flat day today, except for tech stocks. And futures as of now, as I'm looking into market watch, I think are also kind of flat and it's only been an hour that, you know, the after hour session started. So maybe a little bit early to say, but usually on days when the Fed, you know, is about to speak, we can see a rally before they actually release comments and, you know, the, the speech of Jerome Powell or everything stays flat until we start seeing some leaks into what can potentially be what they're going to say. Now, if they come out and say, you know what? Inflation is still not working. We still have a bunch of openings in the job market, means, meaning that the job market is still solid and strong. Then we're going to continue to be aggressive. So another 50 or 70 basis points in January and February. And then I think we can expect for another red day and red day after that and red day after that and a red day after that. All right. So. Nobody knows exactly what they're going to do, but I think people are betting mostly into, you know, a good news because it kind of makes sense by looking at where we are already. But nobody knows until what happens. So what does that mean for you if you want to invest, if you are still investing? Well, still investing, dollar cost averaging in your favorite stocks, ETF mutual funds doesn't change anything. All right. Now, if you want a day trade, swing trade, usually what I do on days like this is I just do nothing. I wait to see where the direction will go in order to know exactly where to position the money. If I want to short, if I want to buy, or if I want to add to my current position, it will all depend on what is going to, going to happen because it's like pretty much betting money and nobody knows exactly what the future holds. So I don't do that. 